because you genuinely pray from your heart. The Lord will help me tell you this secret. Because you prayed, you've prayed. The Lord will help me tell you a secret. Go and look at the lives of people who are nations and see how their lives were in scriptures. You see, one of the signs that there is a nation inside you is that there will be a traveler inside you. You'll be a traveler. People will look at you at first and think you are a confused person. But it's restlessness because he saw that he was also a nation. So there was a power that could make him restless because nations don't like to be tamed. The day they tame you, they will limit you. He said, when you become restless, you look at the two-room apartment and you say, what am I doing here? You look at the banking job that they are paying you 50,000 and it now dawns on you and you say, what am I doing here? Those who are of the nations are travelers. Travelers. Listen, listen, listen. Travelers. You will not even understand your life. Moses, who was to lead the nation in him, was the destiny of a nation. He went on a journey. Abraham, in him there was a family, a nation, a generation, the whole world. He went on a journey. Why are you not going on a journey? You can't leave your comfort zone. That's the thing that wants that man to, to leave you and go to your children. One thing you must know about the anointing for generations. Are we still together? Now I just told you about the secret of the anointing upon nations. Those who are going to be nations. There will be an anointing of a traveler. Those who are going to be generation is an anointing of a seed. They will die so that others can live. Yes. Any man who carries in him a generation, that man will be a first fruit, only separated unto God. Yes. The Bible says, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, he what? Abide that alone. But when he falls into the ground and die, it comes out and bear fruit and those fruit can bear fruit and those fruit can bear fruit. That's the anointing of a generation. Don't, don't look down yourself and say you are suffering. No, you are carrying the body for many generations. So yes, you'll be the first to be hot. You'll be the first to be rejected. You'll be the first to be accused. You'll be the first to be insulted. On your back will be discussed for many generations. The Bible said the chastisement of our peace was upon him. What father is there that will not want to fight for his children? You think you are suffering? No, you are fighting. You are fighting. Can I tell you something? There are certain areas that are not big enough to host you. God will remove you from there. Amen. Imagine you driving a Rolls Royce into Ado village and drive the same Rolls Royce in Asokoro. There's a difference between the two reactions. If you drive a Rolls Royce into Ado village now, the whole community will know because that Rolls Royce, that reality, that community is too small to host it. You can't park a Rolls Royce on the street in that place. But if you go to places like Dubai, a Rolls Royce is like taxi. So even if you park it on the street, there's nobody that will pay attention to it. Because that place is big enough to host any kind of greatness you bring. Don't force yourself to dwell in a place that cannot host your tree. You see, whenever God begins to take the seed and the traveler on journeys, 
What he's doing is that for the seed, he's finding a ground that can host a, his reality. Because the wrong ground can kill that reality. And for the traveler, he's finding a, he's finding a land that can host his tent. The wrong land and the wrong ground can limit you. Are you seeing the similarity between these two? They need the right ground to prosper. You are forcing yourself to stay there. How can you experience the anointing of enlargement when you are forcing yourself to be contained? See, now you are still afraid of 100,000. Hey, hey, hey. See, you may not have money. Man, and daddy was talking today. He told me something. He said, one thing that God gives his men is certainty. Certainty. You don't have money, but you know you are big. You just know that you are destined to be great. Because of that certainty, you can take certain step. Hey, you are going to rent a big place. Where will you get money to pay next year? You will not get money, but me, I will get money. The forces will respond to your reality. Even Satan can know a nation when it comes. The traditions of the people that you are about to leave on account of what is in you, if you don't take time, it can limit you. Because those people, we are not destined to bet a nation. Why are you adopting their tradition? They tell you trekking is exercise. Okrika is better than new clothes. That's a strange tradition. Listen. If you accept it as your reality, it becomes your reality. Yes. The Lord told me one day, he said, not acknowledging the blessing upon your life, even though you've been blessed, it's not humility. It's an insult on the God who has blessed you. Yes, you come and you know God has blessed you financially. That's how you, uh, you know we're managing. No, I'm a more time millionaire, sir. It's not pride. Mm, it's not pride. I'm, I'm a more time alone. I don't know about you, but I'm not managing, sir. That thing, you know what it is? It's a statement of confidence on the God who has helped you. And then when I ask you, how did you become a more time alone? Then you now tell them about where God picked you from. That's what humility is at that point. Humility is not where I'm managing. Humility is always remembering the rock from which you were healed. Remembering the days God saved you from the lions and the bear. Those testimonies are your, are your marks of humility. When God makes you great. But there's a, there's a culture out there. A blessed man is refusing to identify himself as a blessed man because he's saying, you know, we don't want to be proud. You are a proud man. So when you, when you were poor, you were not ashamed of identifying yourself as poor. Now that the Lord, are you trying to say the Lord has not been faithful to you? It's an insult to God. Strange traditions that me, I had to unlearn them. The traditions of my father's house. The traditions of a pauper. The traditions of a slave. The tradition of a coward. I, need to I needed to unlearn them. I knew how many people that were afraid of me when I started allowing so many people to stay with me. They say this guy destiny will now crash. Aye, aye, aye. A young man that has not put in life together, he just packed so many people to stay in this house. Uh, we are still here today. It's a nation, sir. What you manifest now is a reality of what was inside you. So if I can raise a nation, what will raising children be to me? May God give you understanding. If you don't wake up into the reality of who you are by divine revelation, you will bear a flag and the angels upon your life will weep because you are a man of honor that do not know. It's as a beast that perishes, a potential wasted. A man of honor who came from a house where even slaves ate properly because
because he did not realize he was eating with pigs and telling the people thank you sir him that should be eating pigs he, for example began to eat with pigs do you understand he was so diminished that the most dirtiest animal he began to eat the food of the most dirtiest animal I had to repent for many things. <laughs> the Bible said, do not withhold good from your brother when it is in thy what? Power. Yes. You have power. It's power. When you do kindness to somebody, what you've done is that you've walked in power. Remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that what giveth thee? Power. So if, so if he gives you wealth, what he gave you is not wealth. He gave you power. And that power is to what? Empower. So who are you empowering? And what power are you empowering them with? If yours is spiritual power, empower them. If it's financial power, empower them. If it's connection, empower them. By all means, be empowering somebody. You see, because you prayed, See, when you leave this kind of place now and you go back, you will now see the slaves, the people who chose to make themselves lawful captives. You will see them. And trust me, if you sustain this mindset, it will get you out of the slums. Because what God will do in your training is that part of the things he will work in you is the mind of a warrior. Because when you decide to rise, that's why you will know Satan has armed guards that wants to keep you in darkness. It's like North Korea. You cannot escape from there. I'm staying in North Korea. It's a problem. Okay, I want to leave. You're not allowed to leave. What kind of strange land is that? That is the definition of what tyrannism can do. Okay, sir, I want to go to some, let me go to Sudan and suffer. No, you cannot leave. The only way to escape is death. But as long as you are there and you don't try to leave, you will not know that there are armed guards that have been positioned to keep you in bondage. They will never show up until the day of your manifestation. Do your, do, don't you know that even in Egypt, the Jews were practicing Judaism in Egypt. But the day they wanted to be free, Pharaoh now said, who is this your God? So he was not interested in their God until the day they say, our God say we should go. How come we came into Egypt freely? Now you don't want us to leave. There is a tyrant armed, only waiting from the day you wake up and say, no, I want to live here. May the Lord bless us. Bless his word in our spirit and our mouths. Help us to come into the realization of who you've made us to be. May we not die in mediocrity. May nations not be trapped on account of our refusal to show forth. May the earth not be in perpetual captivity because we've not chosen to arise. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Sit down. Why prepare offering? Let me tell you something. I heard the man of God say something that.